Hello, good afternoon, morning, evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our live all the way from, from Lugano, Switzerland. Uh, we have um, Rafael Oliveira with us today, who will talk to you about um, his project Auditorium, which um, aims to develop a model of cultural sustainability indicators for the uh, management of tangible and intangible um, heritage. And he will also discuss the role of culture in the concept of sustainability um, and the main elements of cultural sustainability that can be perceived by visitors inside heritage sites. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ella Bekeshi. I'm one of the co-directors of Heritage Education Network for Lead. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization um, that dedicated to the safeguarding of culture and heritage through holistic approaches. Um, and I feel like um, this pre uh, presentation will be very in line with our approach. And this is why um, I asked Rafael to, um, to present his, um, his research today. And a little bit about uh, Rafael before he starts. So um, he's a PhD candidate in knowledge management and organization at the Federal University of uh, Minas Gerais uh, in Brazil. Um, and he's uh, also a visiting researcher at the UNESCO chair at um, Università della Suizera um, Italiana, where I also am uh, right now. And I wanted to invite Rafael to uh, present today because, as I said, um, his research is amazing and very in line with what we're doing. And um, I feel like it's important to um, look at different models and different research from, uh, from across the globe. Um, so um, I'm very happy that uh, he said yes. And uh, he is also, um, he has also, um, he also has experience in uh, public administration. Um, working in the Secretary of Tourism of uh, Minas Gerais. I hope I pronounced it uh, properly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, in Minas Gerais uh, State as a Director of Research um, and Information and Statistics and also as Superintendent of Tourism uh, Policies. And uh, Rafael, Rafael is also the owner of the um, Tourism and Innovation website. Um, which is a space to discuss information, communication, technology, concepts, and um, innovation in tourism. So I would like to give the word, the platform now to Rafael. Uh, please remember that we will have a short Q&A after the uh, presentation. So make sure to ask your questions um, in the comments uh, because Rafael will answer them if you have any. If you're watching the replay, then you can also ask your, uh, your questions in the comments and um, we make sure to you know, revisit them and, and answer them, reply to them later on. So I will just have Rafael um, share his um, slides with, uh, with us today and then take it away. 
Oh, good night, everyone. Good afternoon, Belize. Thanks a lot, Ella, Ella, for the invitation and congratulations for the job into the Heritage Education Network. It's a very nice program, a very nice NGO. Uh, I, wor I don't work in an NGO, I work in a GO. <laughs> so I'm in the other side of the coin. So it's very nice to, to learn more about the NGOs and to um, change our knowledge about the, the subject of culture. So I think this kind of dialogue is very important for, for us and is very good for our research. And if you have any questions about it, I will be available after my presentation. So I will start to share my screen. I think that everybody can see it. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Rafael Oliveira. Um, I'm a PhD student in Brazil, in the Federal University of Minas Gerais. And I also work in the Secretary of Tourism and Culture in the state of Minas Gerais. It's a, Minas Gerais, we have a, a lot of states. And our state is like the same size as France with two, 22 million people. So we have a lot of work to deal with our cities and to develop tourism and culture inside our state. And to work with cultural sustainability, it's a huge challenge for us. And that's why we are working in this project that will be very important for us in the midterm. So today I will talk a little bit about the project. It's called Auditorium Project. Then I will show some preliminary results that we already have and also some challenges, because we are still working in this project, it's not finished yet. So the idea is to share some, some challenges with you, and maybe you can help us with this kind of uh, results that I will present today. So what's this, the project called Auditorium? It's a cooperation project between Universitat della Svizzera Italiana in Switzerland. I'm here now with Ella and the Federal University of Minas Gerais and the Federal University of the Jequitinhonha and Mucuri Valley in Brazil. And this project is financed by the State Secretariat for Education, Research and Innovation, the SERI, here in Switzerland. So the idea is we are a group of three researchers here in Switzerland for one month. We are studying, we are uh, interviewing some old heritage site managers to uh, I will explain later better about this, but to understand a little bit the concepts of cultural sustainability, some actions that they are working. And also in the, the next year, some two researchers from UZI will be in Brazil to do the same interviews and, and to finish our idea to create some indicators for uh, tangible and intangible heritage. So our main goal is to develop a model of cultural sustainability indicators for the management of tangible and intangible heritage. It's really hard, especially because when you talk about culture, it's, uh, it's, very, uh, it's not like infrastructure that you can measure easily or the number of tourists. So when we talk about culture, it's very hard to transform the visitors' opinions into numbers, into indicators, especially intangible heritage. So it's a big challenge in try to transform these ideas, these thoughts from the tourists into uh, indicators. So it's a, a really challenge for us. So why is important? Why we, we thought about this, this project? First of all, we need to talk about sustainability. We have some ideas when, and some problems when we started to research about the concept of sustainability. So the main idea of sustainability is to meet the needs of the present without compromising the needs of future generations, ensuring equity of resources fairly and globally. So this is the main idea of sustainability. But also when we research more about this, this concept, we also see that in general, the concept of sustainability is composed only by three dimensions. Uh, 
the economic dimension, the social dimension, and the environmental dimension. So it's a huge problem and also uh, a very huge debate about the real role of culture into the concept of sustainability. Some of authors think that uh, the culture is like inside the dimension of social, so we create a social cultural dimension of sustainability. So uh, we think that the dimension of culture it's not so debated inside this concept of sustainability. Uh, so this is a huge problem when we talk about this subject. And when we think about what's the role of culture in sustainability, we have some authors that said that the culture can be seen in three different ways in sustainable uh, development. The first one that we can see in the left side of the screen is the culture can be inside the sustainable development. So the culture can be seen as a fourth dimension of sustainability, and it works with the in the same size as the cultural, as the economical sustainable economical dimension, social dimension, and also environmental. And the second one, culture can be seen uh, as a way for the sustainable development. So this idea is to, to affirm that culture is the pillar of the sustainability. So you need to develop first the culture element of the society. Then when you have a strong culture, you will uh, develop the, the three another dimensions that the social, environmental, and also economic. And then we have the role that culture can be seen as the sustainable development concept. This is more our philosophical one. So the main idea is that for you to achieve uh, sustainability, you need to change all the culture inside the, the society first. So you need to create a culture for sustainability. So when the people learn about this culture, so you can achieve your goals from sustainability using the three dimensions. So... Uh, the role of culture in sustainability is not so um, defined, especially when we talk about cultural heritage. And when we try to see some definitions about cultural sustainability in literature, we see seven different discourses of cultural sustainability. So, depending uh, about the field that you are researching, cultural sustainability can be uh, seen as different as seven different ways to explain explain it. So we have the cultural heritage approach. We have the cultural vitality approach that is encouraging communities to participate into the management. And the locality approach that says that they guarantee that cultural values and goods are preserved in an authentic way and without changes, with no interference of the exterior. So the locality, for example, discourse said that the tourism is a problem for the cultural sustainability. We have the another one that is the cultural diversity. It's the recognition of cultural diversity as a key element of social development. Then we have the eco-cultural resilience that's working together between culture and nature environment. Also the eco-cultural civilization that's a deep cultural change in people's values and behavior so that sustainable practices can occur. And the last one, we have the economic vitality that works a lot with the idea that the economic development based on access by the community and also tourists uh, will improve the idea of cultural sustainability. So the main idea was, okay, we have three different roles of culture and we have seven different discourses of cultural sustainability. So, but which one of these fits our area? How, how is the that we need to follow to find more information or to create a better strategy for cultural sustainability? So the idea when we talk about culture in tourism, we know that culture in heritage, they are seen as vital elements for tourism. Uh, we cannot talk about uh, cultural tourism uh, without talking about heritage, for example, they are really related 
each other. Also, we have a lack of sustainability indicators based on tourist perspective. And when we talk about sustainability indicators, we can see a lot of indicators about the environment. We can see a lot of indicators about the building, but uh, a lot of indicators about the community opinion. But when we talk about tourism, we, we cannot see some uh, indicators about, based on the tourist perspective. And they are cheaper to achieve. So if you don't have, a lot, for example, a lot of money, uh, if you get this opinion about the tourists, it's cheaper than you try to create indicators from another databases. So we know also that in the future, the users' comments on social media, such as Google or TripAdvisor, will contain elements of sustainability. So why not we can uh, try to track these comments from TripAdvisor or Google and try to understand what the tourists are talking about culture inside of these comments and try to manage it and try to monitor them. That's the, the main challenge. So with all this context, we have four questions that need to be solved in our research, in our project. So the first one, we would like to know what's the role of culture in the concept of sustainability for heritage sites. The second question is, what's the most appropriate definition of cultural sustainability for cultural heritage sites? The third one, we would like to know what's the conceptual model of cultural sustainability for heritage sites, and then which indicators of cultural sustainability can be evaluated by visitors in heritage sites. So our project, and also my PhD thesis is based on this project, we try to answer these four questions inside of the project. So the relevance of the project that we think that uh, if you have a cultural sustainability indicators for heritage sites, we will help the heritage managers to improve the experience of their visitors based on cultural sustainability. And when you improve this experience with the visitors, you will have a lot of benefits for the society. So uh, the main idea is if the manager can work with cultural elements inside the experience for the visitors, they will uh, achieve a lot of benefits for the society. And this will help to establish a cultural sustainability environment inside the local, the region, the city. And so this is the main relevance of our project. So how we are doing that? Our methodology is divided in three steps. The first one, we did a quantitative analysis with, we, we sent a survey, a quantitative survey by email for 60 world area site managers all around the world. And most of them that answer us from Europe, but we got uh, answers from um, Asia, South America, also Africa. So we got information from, from all, most all around the world. And we got this, this context. We, we went into the National UNESCO Commission's uh, website and we collected the emails from the National UNESCO Commission's using a robot that we call web scrapping. So the robot got entered in the website from uh, UNESCO Commission's. So we get all the emails from all the countries and then we send an email to them asking to share this information with the World Heritage Site Managers from each country. So we got the 60 uh, answers. Um, and the, our idea was to analyze the perception of these managers about the, the, the cultural sustainability definitions and try to see a path about the definitions that I showed you before, the seven definitions, and also the role of culture inside the sustainability model. Then, after this, we did a qualitative analysis. We collect by a web scrapping using a, a tool, a free tool. We collect the 2,750 reviews on TripAdvisor platform from 22 World Heritage sites by using web scrapping. And we started to analyze all of these comments one by one reading all of them and trying to classify some elements inside these comments. So we read the, the comments and said, oh, this information here is important because 
it, uh, it fits with a cultural element of analysis. And I will explain better uh, with some examples in the end of the, our presentation. And then when we started to classify this information inside the comments, we created 24 different categories and we aggregated them into five dimensions in our model. So we have this quantitative analysis that help us to achieve uh, our concept of, cons of cultural sustainability and the qualitative analysis is trying to see the tourist perspective about those elements. And at least we also are uh, working on this uh, step, is the validation process. That's why we are here in Switzerland and trying to talk with these old data site managers and see if they agree or not with the model. How can we adjust the model if it fits for each kind of heritage? Because we have a lot of different heritage, uh, such as church, such as cities, such as museums. So we, it's our challenge to discover if our model can fit to all of this kind of uh, heritage. And so we are doing some interview with World Heritage Site Managers, and also we are doing a card sorting uh, methodology to improve our classification. So we show them all these 24 categories uh, in a piece of papers, and they try to classify them into the five dimensions of our model. So uh, we can see if it's working or if we, if we can uh, change something about it. And in the end, we will try to see to do a new survey for tourists. So this is the final part of the project and try to uh, see if the, mo the model can be fit. And we try to, to get some indicators from the tourist perspective. So some results of the managers, the first uh, research that we did. Uh, some conclusions are that the concept of sustainability is linked to discourses with the seven discourses that we presented, aimed at the first one, uh, cultural sustainability is linked with the preservation of tangible and intangible assets. And the second one, it's the participation of the society in the management and democratization of access. This is really important in the, the opinion of the, the managers. The third one is the guarantee of the valorization of culture and its preservation for future generations. So they are really aligned with the concept of sustainability that we are working, especially to preserve uh, the assets for the future generations. And also that cultural sustainability is more connected with the social dimension of sustainability than the economic and social dimensions, uh, the economic and environmental dimensions. I made a mistake here. So uh, it's not like the first example that we show you first with that said the culture is a fourth dimension of sustainability. They think that they are more connected with the social dimension than the economic and also the environmental one. So this is a new information for us and a new information based on the literature that we saw. And also, uh, we have some uh, results from the visitors. So this is an example of comment that we got from a trip advisor, uh, just to show you how can we classify some information inside this comment. I don't know if everybody can read it. Maybe it's a little, uh, I will, I think now it's better. But here, for example, we can see that the title of the comment, we have the word, uh, when in CU, this is a must. A must for us is like a unicity uh, element of sustainability. So it's, it's a place that you need to go. You can find it anywhere. So it's important to try to measure this. And also the comments, we have a lot of uh, elements of cultural sustainability or cultural uh, in general. So, as uh, example, the palaces are beautiful and the grounds are well landscaped. The original buildings were burned by the Japanese during their occupation of Korea. So, these are recreations, but few unscient. So, this, for example, we have information about authenticity. Uh, 
Of course, they are not original ones, but they feel like original ones. So they have this element of authenticity that the people are trying to uh, explain better. And we can get these information and try to classify it into authenticity. Also, the guys at the library are very kind and helpful, providing very interesting information. So here I have information about local information and also the use of local guides. So we have another information that can be classified. Uh, it's also common to see people dressed in the garb of the time period, which really adds into the atmosphere as you wander the grounds. So here we, are, we have a lot of examples of a local costume that are used inside the tourist attraction, and it will improve your experience inside it. So this is an element that we can try to measure. And also, um, it's hot and rain frequent at the time of the year. Uh, they have some information about uh, support infrastructure. That's the little coffee has limited offerings, so you may want to bring food, so we have information from supporting. And also, um, okay, I think this is the main points from this uh, palace, that's a world heritage site in CU. So that's the idea that we can classify these informations and try to create categories uh, and see if you can monitor this kind of information. Here, I will show you another example, the second one. It's a disappointing comment, so it's a rating of two from uh, Robin Island in Cape Town. They have a lot of problems when it starts to uh, classify these comments. But here, for example, we can see, I must agree with a previous report that the whole experience was rushed. Uh, we were really looking forward to our visit, and upon arrival on the island, were directed to some waiting buses. So the people here start to complain about uh, the quality of the visitation. They spend a lot of a lot of time waiting for the tour. When they arrive in the place, uh, they have a lot of a little time to see everything because the guide was was really fast. So they have problems to understand what the people were was talking about. So here, for example, we have all quite interesting, but it went on too long and it was not always possible to hear him. So this is a problem of the local guides uh, and a problem of the quality of information also. Um, so here we can see that the quality of information and it's, it's important for the tourists. And then here in the end of the comment, he says that it's quite disappointing and nowhere near as emotional as I expected the tour to be. So here we have this this element here that's the emotion it's like the idea of uniqueness the unicity also the authenticity that the people are disappointed because they didn't have it inside the 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 trip so these are two examples of comments that we are trying to classify and to create this model based on the tourist experience uh, so when we try to classify all these informations, we create here are the, the main results of each one of these categories. So we created five dimensions to aggregate all the, the, the categories that we classified into the comments. And we can see here that most of 31% of the comments we have information about the quality of information. 31 talked about the uniqueness. 21% uh, about authenticity. Uh, we have here about local guys with 23% of the comments. Uh, value for money, it's important. Conservation and preservation, 20%. Networked attractions, 13%. And visitors capacity, 16%. So here we can try to create these categories of elements that can be useful for us to create our model and also to create the final indicators for cultural sustainability. So when we talk about all this information, we said, well, now we can try to see what's the real role of culture inside the sustainability. So we think that the our model that we, we call it the Lotus Flower Model, we affirm that the most the most important 
dimension in sustainability for heritage, it's not the cultural one, because the manager said that the social one is more important as a consequence and also as a foundation of the sustainability. So if we, we imagine the sustainability dimensions as a lotus flower, our social dimension will be the green part of the flower. It will be the roots of the flower. Then the second dimension, that is the yellow part of the flower, that will germinate uh, and to create another flowers. Uh, also the pillar of the flower, it will be uh, the cultural uh, dimension here. So we don't agree that cultural is a fourth element of the sustainability or not the main pillar with the three ones. We think that the social one is the most important than if you have a society, because you just have culture if you have a society. And all your uh, benefits and all your problems will uh, achieve this society if you have problems in cultural in environmental and also in the economy. So uh, when you have the culture very established, you will have the petals of the flowers that will be the dimensions of the environment and also the economical one. And of course, the lotus flower model, the flower just exists because everything works fine. So you need to work with the four dimensions together. This is important, but they need to be seen uh, with different uh, stages of importance. And so that's our idea of the role of culture and sustainability for heritage sites. And that's we are trying to, to test it yet. Yeah, it's not a final form. Maybe we can change it later. Also, our definition of cultural sustainability for heritage. So we created a definition about using the, our results from the managers and from the visitors and we get this definition. So for us, the cultural sustainability is the attraction capacity of transforming heritage, the cultural vitality and cultural diversity preserved by the current generation in strengthening cultural identity, social engagement, expanding knowledge, and developing cultural capital for future generations through the management of the visitor's experience. Because our focus is to improve and to develop the tourist uh, attractions and the tourist experience to achieve these goals. So how the manager can do this, uh, this, this job? Uh, so this experience is based on the development of information communication actions, valorization of cultural elements, existence of facilities, cultural integration, and organization during the visit. So here we have the visitor's results that are our five uh, dimensions of cultural sustainability. And finally, we discovered that information and communication technologies can serve as support to achieve cultural sustainability through all the process. So information and communication is important in all the process, not a uh, different dimension, for example, of the cultural sustainability. And then we have our conceptual model here. So we transform our definition into this conceptual model, and we also are trying to validate it with the managers. Maybe we can, we will need to change it a little bit. But the main idea is to to think that we have three foundational elements of the cultural sustainability that the current generation needs to work. The first one is the cultural heritage. You need to guarantee the cultural heritage, also the cultural vitality and the cultural diversity. When you have these three elements working well, the manager can work with the five dimensions inside the management, uh, the management step, that is the information communication, cultural enhancement, facilities, cultural integration and organization. So if it if he, he works fine with these five dimensions, you he will improve the visitor experience. And also, we will have consequences for the consolidation of the cultural sustainability for the future generations. So what's the consequence of this for the society? So we will increase the strengthening of the identity, the social engagement, the knowledge and cultural capital of a society. And of course, 
one day this future generation will be the current generation. So the cycle will start over again. And at least the information communication uh, technologies will help in all the process. So you can use ICTs uh, to improve, for example, the preservation here in the cultural heritage. You can use here uh, inside the organization of the visits uh, using um, selling tickets online, for example, or you can use here to uh, increase the experience into the information communication and dimension, and also maybe creating courses and education inside the knowledge um, element. So you can use ICTs all around the process. So our next step now, it's the validation of this model. We are some challenges that we are we are already seeing as a result when we, we start to interview these managers. The first one is that the managers do not know how to monitor the cultural impact of the sites. They don't have a lot of information about it. Most of the data that they use is the number of tourists, uh, the, the natural environment that they have some systems of sustainability for environment, but not for culture. Also, the vision about the role of the manager in each site is different. So we have different managers trying to evaluate a model, but they have different uh, needs. So it's hard for them to understand their role inside the process or their role as a managers because they are different and they have different realities. So this is a challenge for us. Also, we know that the framework is important to guide these different managers into the same objective. So that's why he, it is useful because if they don't know what they are doing, maybe with the framework and some guide, they, they know what they need to do, how they can create strategies to achieve a cultural sustainability inside the Eritas managers, Eritas sites. Also, they believe that the framework is very theoretical so far, it needs to be more practical. So we need to work, of course, in the elements of the indicators so they can see the reality, how they can use it uh, right away into their sites. And also, it's hard to evaluate different attractions. Uh, it's different for tourists to analyze, for example, the city of Bern or the city of Lavaux, that's the wine terraces here in in Switzerland, it, and also it's easy when you try to evaluate museums, for example, or church, uh, you can see more elements in less space. So this is the challenge for the model. How can we uh, see these different elements? How can we create the same indicators for different realities? So thanks a lot for uh, sharing this moment. And if you have any doubt, you can send me an email and I will answer right away as soon as possible. And thanks a lot for the invitation and I hope for the comments. Thank you for the presentation. I thought it was extremely interesting. We have quite a few questions actually. Um, so let's just jump in. I'm going to go in, in order. So the earlier ones are probably going to refer to some of the earlier uh, parts of the presentation. So the first one um, is from uh, Crystal Hyde. And uh, she asked, uh, should it be only those questions that you need to ask? So I'm thinking she was referring to um, the research questions that you talked about at the beginning of the presentation. Okay, yeah. These are the main questions, of course, when we start the process and the research, we have more questions inside of the project. But these are the four objectives that we have to answer inside of the, the research. It's yeah, so already a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to narrow it down, I think. Yeah. Um, Everyone in academia knows that um, you have a hundred questions and then you kind of have to narrow it down because a lifetime isn't enough to answer all of them. Yeah, but, um, that's true. <laughs> but um, yeah, 
So the ne next question is from Miss Sylvia Batti. She is one of our co-directors, actually. Um, and she says, um, great information, Rafael. Have you looked at the perspective of frontline communities? Yeah, we research? have this. Uh, yeah, everybody asks us about the role of communities inside this model. Of course, we are trying to, uh, in the second part of our visiting, especially in Brazil, because we have a lot of intangible heritage that are produced by com local communities in Brazil. So the main idea is try to uh, see if this model can be applied, especially in the intangible ones. So yes, of course, the communities are the most important part of the, the cultural sustainability. Of course, that we are trying to see the perspective of the tourists because most of the time we have already indicators and a lot of research about the impact from communities. But yes, we are worried about it and we will try to put this inside our validation model. Yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, it's always um, because we're, we're so focused on, on community engagement. I think uh, it naturally was, I think, one of the first questions that popped up. Um, yeah, so it's always, I feel like it's always a very different perspective sometimes. Um, the perspective of the tourists, the perspective of the managers, and the perspective of local communities. Um, they can be very, very different or they can align sometimes um, very well, but yeah. Yeah, we um, think that when we start to uh, to study about the cultural sustainability, the tourists is a very important actor inside the tourism, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we didn't find a lot of research about this point of view. And mm -hmm. I think that maybe it's easier because when we work in Brazil with indicators, we can we need to do a lot with low resource. So we try to collect information that already exists and it's easier to collect information from websites that you have comments from visitors, even if they are from the local communities or from tourists. But our idea is try to facilitate a model that everybody can measure these this results in an easy way. Mm -hmm. have, have you looked at um, or thought about, I, I just thought of this, um, the difference that domestic uh, visitors and um, international visitors can no we didn't did uh, we didn't uh, have this uh, difference inside the comments because we, mm -hmm. we when we got the comments from the person we don't know who is the person because of the ethical problems inside mm -hmm. the research so until now we don't have this uh, this difference between them maybe when we try to create our last step that will be that create a survey for tourists mm -hmm. then we will can check uh, the difference of a uh, point of view between the international ones the national ones and also for the communities mm -hmm. yeah that would be interesting that's uh, yeah. that's also a problem because <laughs> you have the privacy issues and you, you yeah. want to get to work yeah. with what is public um, in the comments and yeah, yeah that's true um, our next question is from Ms. Um, Rebecca Friedel, um, who is also our <laughs> co-director. Um, she's asking, um, very interesting uh, project, Rafael. You mentioned that the heritage managers did not see sustainability as closely tied to environment. Why do you think this is? Yeah, when we started the interview, some of them already, inclusive um, today, we have an interview today and the manager said that the environment, it was very important to them but when in our first uh survey most of them said that the sustain the cultural sustainability was more linked with the social dimension so the environment was not so um so highlighted inside the 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 research i don't know maybe because it's europe i think that in belize and also in brazil we have some uh some different elements we have the same elements from like beaches nature maybe this it will be a difference when we start to apply the same interviews in brazil maybe mm -hmm. we can see that no environment is really important for us because here most of the places that we are visiting they are uh constructions like buildings or churches so maybe this kind of element is not so 
uh, highlighted during the interviews because it's not the reality of them. That's the challenge of mm -hmm. the project. Try to to see different kind of uh, heritage and see the different uh, mm -hmm. ways of thought about the managers. Yeah, and in Belize, all of the um, national um, archaeological parks are either also nature reserves or they, um, if they're not officially nature reserves, they are situated, you know, within a, a yeah. wilderness environment. Uh, so, so I guess it's very, it's very interesting though because because the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about sustainability, you know, the first first thing that Google, you know, gives you is always environmental sustainability. Yes, so, yes, yeah. So when we talk about, that, yeah, here in Switzerland, yeah. for example, they have a system of indicators of environment sustainability. So you have mm -hmm. a lot about the quality of water, uh, the energy. Uh, so you, mm -hmm. you you have a lot of this this information. So uh, and also we are not working with the natural heritage sites. Our idea mm -hmm. was to focus on the cultural ones because we think that the the gap and the lack of information from the culture is different from environment. Of course, mm -hmm. you have a lot of research about environment that are being doing, especially for the climate change here yeah. in, in Europe. Yeah, so such interesting topic. <laughs> uh, we have another one from Miss uh, Vanessa Clark. Um, she's asking, what is meant by the terms tangible and intangible, um, and what are the different methods of pres uh, of uh, preservance of the assets? I just want to say quickly that we do actually have um, an entire live dedicated uh, to it with uh, Miss uh, Lynette uh, Sabido. Um, and we talk about tangible, intangible, um, cultural heritage, and so on. But we can answer it here as well, of course. Yeah. Uh, in general, the tangible elements, it's the heritage that you can touch. For example, a book. For example, uh, the cheese. For example, the museum. And also the intangible one is the way that you do that thing, for example. So the way that you do the, the cheese, it's intangible uh, heritage, but the, the, the cheese is the tangible one. So the difference is because the intangible ones, they are more difficult to analyze. For example, a cultural manifestation, uh, a cultural event. So the way that the people do this event, it's the intangible heritage, but the tourists only see the tangible one. So it's hard to to understand if the model will also fit for the intangible one. And what are the different methods of perseverance of the assets? I didn't get the, or I didn't. I think it's like the different ways we can conserve them. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, we have a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of guides about it at the UNESCO. You have a lot of material about how you can uh, work with these assets. Uh, it's different from a natural environment. It's different from a tangible environment and also intangible one. So it depends of what kind of assets that you need to work to preserve or to conserve. Yeah, it's actually um, in, in the other live, which you can find on our, um, on our Facebook page and, and YouTube pages, um, we actually talk about, um, about this and you know, we look at tangible and intangible, and, and I think we, we actually talk about the fact that um, using the word preserve or conserve something that is intangible is not actually mm -hmm. correct because it's, yes, you know, if it's something living, it's something yeah. you cannot touch, you know, it's the way you, you know, um, is music, for example, right? Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's culinary arts and the recipes and that changes you know from grandmother to grandmother yeah i agree for example um the you know singing melodies change folk stories they change and that's the beauty of them so the way you would you know we can talk about conserving physical assets like what chemicals are you using to conserve this specific painting from this century and how you're going to conserve that or what methods are you using to conserve um, a Maya building, right? Versus, you know, you cannot really conserve something 
that is yeah. is living and changing. So to you know kind of safeguard it or to ensure its continuation, you can use techniques like encourage people, you know, encourage the younger generation to to listen to those folk stories and create yeah. opportunity for for elders to tell these stories or um, and things like that, you know. Um, these are so that they have very different ways of yeah. of how we how we can work with yeah but it's a very yeah, good question I, yeah i totally agree i think that you for intangible assets for example uh the importance is that you can guarantee the values of that elements so you have the music you can sing with different kind of tunes for example but the the population need to know the value of this song the meaning of this song and what this song represents for themselves. I think that the most important ones is try to stimulate the values of the intangible assets, mm -hmm. not the, the the style or the way they are presented, mm -hmm. but more the history and the value. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I suggest you um, have a look at our, our, our talk uh, with uh, Lynette on intangible cultural heritage, because we discuss all of this. So you might be might be interested. Um, okay, next question. Again, Sylvia, our co-director, uh, she's asking, um, can you tell us more about how you classify the elements uh, from comments? Um, so you mentioned the must being a uh, unicity um, and also you know, how these become sustainability indicators or relate to sustainability. So I, I think you actually touched on it um, afterwards a little bit, um, but if you could give us... Um, Okay, so yeah, uh, I didn't talk about it, but we research on the literature review. Mm -hmm. And so we collect some main elements that uh, we saw inside the literature that was the main element for the cultural sustainability, such as unicity, authenticity. And then we go to the comments and try to see if these elements work. Mm -hmm. And then if we cannot find it, but it was a new element that we think that uh, from the, our literature review and our perspective, we classified them. And mm -hmm. also uh, how these become sustainability indicators, that's our problem now, mm -hmm. that we are trying to see how can we uh, transform them into indicators that can be useful. Uh, we didn't mm -hmm. get in this final part yet, but maybe we will uh, try to validate this classification and see if the tourists can also really um, evaluate these indicators mm -hmm. to be if it will work or not. But I hope that maybe until March of 2022, I will finish the PhD thesis and I will have the uh, right. a more specific answer for your question, Sylvia. So we have another live in March. Yeah, yeah. Where you answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the next one is from uh, Miss Michelle um, Herrera. Uh, would you say that all five dimensions are equally important? Yeah, when we started to think about the lotus flower model was because we thought that the manager said that the, the social one was the most important one. So I think that our model, we don't work with these four dimensions. They are equally important. Of course, you need to improve all of them, but, but with different hierarchies inside them. So uh, I don't believe that the four dimensions are equally important for heritage purpose. Uh, we think that the social one is the most important one. Then we have the cultural and on third, we have the same uh, balance, the economic and also the environmental one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very, um, it can also be very, um, um, it can also depend on, on who you're asking, because someone yes. who's coming from, you know, a social development background or an economics background would obviously even have you know better knowledge of that discipline or that that environment and and would say that it's crucial um so it's always interesting to to see yeah for sure yeah yeah um and then we have another 
a question from Rebecca Fidel, but I think you answered. She 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 was just saying that I am also curious if uh, you thought to include local stakeholder perspective, like um, tour guides and surrounding communities to these sites. I think you you answered this, and we'll have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See. But I agree. It's a good perspective. Uh, we need to think about the communities to finish this model. We don't need to, only to think about the side of the tourists. And also the managers, because the community is the most important one that will be affected by the the model. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have um, Juan Mas who's asking, um, saying great information, um, and asking, can this model be used specifically for a particular heritage site? Some heritage sites have different management setup. Is this applicable? Yeah, yeah. The idea is that the model can be used for all of kind of sites. That's the challenge that we are trying to. So far, we think that it's easier to be used in tangible heritage sites, the intangible ones. We need to work more with this. Maybe here in Brazil, we will try to to understand a little bit. And yes, some heritage sites they have different management, and but the main idea is to create a guide for them. Because, of, okay, they work differently, they have different goals, but they, we also discovered that they need some guides for this subject because they don't know exactly how to deal with the subject of cultural sustainability. So they need uh, a guide, they need a, a, a light in the end of the tunnel, for example, to find these elements and try to facilitate their jobs to creating some strategies based on these five dimensions that can be uh, the results for the community. Mm -hmm. yeah, these overarching Thanks. frameworks are really hard to to uh, to create because the, every site is just so different, even yeah. within the same country. Um, yes. And let alone, you know, if we compare some European sites with Belize or Brazil, it's very different. Um, yeah. Uh, we have another question uh, from uh, Shanika Mendez. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, and they're asking, um, since there's not uh, much information readily available to monitor culture, what kind of research would you say can be done to achieve the information needed for this project? Well, we are trying to uh, read some indicators for culture that you can you can find like the global sustainable uh, indicators uh, the agenda 2030 so you have a lot of models of uh, of to monitor culture but most of them they rely on information from buildings or for the mm -hmm. the the impact inside the communities but not the tourists perspective that's our goal to to research it. And what kind of mm -hmm. research would you say can be done to achieve the information? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's hard because we are very focused on in our research at first. And, and we are trying to finish it and try to see if it can be useful for a new research about the subject. So I think that this is the, our first step that can be useful for new researchers for uh, new discussions and new debates about this uh, and to, to improve our new papers about it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm just looking at the comments. We have no, uh, quite a lot of questions. So I, I, think, I think we can ask all of them. We have a little bit of time. So the next question is from um, Liana Santos. Um, do you think that all five dimensions are equally important to uh, reach, uh, to research? And how do you think availability of the information could be improved? Well, about the five dimensions, I think that I explained uh, before. Yeah. That I think that's it's different from heritage sites. Uh, and the availability of the information could be improved. We have in, uh, inside our uh, the information communication dimensions because we found a lot of problems uh, when we talk about the quality of the information. The tourists, they complain about 
if the guide took uh, if the guide talks too long and it's too boring or I can understand the the language they are talking about uh, some places that you go you can't find any information in your language so this is hard and uh, you don't use a lot of ICTs to improve the experience of the tourists from the side of the information we also don't you don't have like uh, signs uh, about dangers signs about uh, where do you need to go to visit all the places so the quality of information it's a main point I think is the, the most important point that the tourists uh, selected inside of the comments that needed to be achieved. Uh, so I think that the site can work with a lot of strategies, also using digital tools, also on websites is important, trying to stimulate the feedback from the tourists, not only in social media, but also uh, in mm -hmm. internal forms. But it's very important to know and to understand who is visiting your site and what's the opinion about the visitors inside your site. Mm -hmm. And that would obviously give you more information to... To improve, yeah. To improve the, the quality of the model you're developing as well. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, it kind of relies on good communication between the tourism providers and managers and the the visitors so it's not a, you know like opening up avenues for for better communication and better input from you know about what is happening really on archaeological sites for example um we have uh not a not a comment just a uh not a question just a comment from from becca she says uh, thank you for your response. You touched um, on why I was on what I was curious, uh, because here in Belize, cultural uh, heritage sites are often not easily um, isolated from the broader environment. In fact, here at uh, HenB, our organization, we believe that natural heritage is an underrepresented area of heritage. But of course, every country creates or um, imagines their heritage sites in a different manner. So it's a fascinating work. So oh, thanks a lot, we, Rebecca. We and I think it, yes. And, and I actually mentioned how. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rebecca. And I think that maybe we can test it on Belize also. <laughs> I think it will be a very nice experience mm -hmm. to see how can we improve the model, such also in Brazil, because you have a, yeah. a natural heritage that is fabulous. And of course, that's the main core of the tourism inside Belize. Yeah. You should you should also come to Belize do some research. Yeah, in for Belize. sure. I'm waiting for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, <laughs> Rebecca says, "Okay, last question." <laughs> um, and related to my previous comments, questions: um, Did you find that um, anyone mentioned plants or animals in their uh, reviews of the site? Yes. yes. Rebecca is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she she works with uh, she works with plants, so she's oh, always interested cool. in the <laughs> environmental aspect. No, yes, we found it, and we classify it as natural environment connection. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, in Rio, when you go to Corcovado to see the Christ, you go by a train. They go all the mountain, and there are a lot of people that said that the vi the what increased the visit was the natural elements such as ah i i, I saw a, a, a dolphin or i saw a monkey i saw a different bird and this for me was really special so yes we we know that these natural environment connections they are really important to improve the quality of the experience of the visitors inside the heritage sites so this we are uh, we saw a lot of comments in Robin Island, in South, uh, South Africa, it was uh, very interesting to uh, the Statue of Liberty when you go by boat and you can see some natural elements also. Uh, in um, Dutchland, I think, yeah. Uh, some, some tourists said that it's beautiful when you go to the gardens, for example, 
on during the uh, when the flowers are blooming. It's mm -hmm. better if you go when the flowers are blooming than on the winter, for example. So this makes difference. It's uh, when you have this connection with natural environment, they we have a, a, a better quality of the visitation for sure. Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually very interesting. Um, <laughs> last comment from Sylvia, and I think we, we got to the end. Um, she's saying that she will look out for a follow-up discussion in March and maybe um, a paper in the uh, 2022 Culture Symposium. So, <laughs> no, I hope so. I guess I hope, we'll, we'll, I hope that in we'll the end of in March... We'll look out for a final presentation. <laughs> um, the Culture Symposium will be um, in September. So oh, yeah. I will have so time. We will have time. Yes. Yeah, so we're we're. I think it's been said. Uh, we will look out for the <laughs> your final results <laughs> and to come back and present it. Okay. I think we got to the end of the questions and we're we got to the end of our time as well. So thank you so much for for um, presenting and taking the time. Uh, to put together your presentation. Um, I hope that everyone enjoyed it. And um, if anyone's watching the replay, please feel free to ask your questions. We can always go, you know, go back and, and answer, reply to the, to the questions in person. Um, and this live will be available on our Facebook page, Heritage Education Network uh, Belize, um, and on our YouTube page, Heritage Education Network, and um, and um, thank you for thank you for presenting and thank you for tuning in, and uh, hope you've had a nice lunch break. It is 10 p.m. for us <laughs> here in Switzerland, uh, but um, hope to see you after March for another presentation. <laughs> thank Thanks you, everyone. Thanks a lot, Ella, for the invitation. Bye, everybody. Thank Have you. a nice Bye. day.